Have you heard of a blue Christmas? A blue Christmas is when we acknowledge that there are people who at Christmas time feel blue. It's not just a song by Elvis Presley. <laughs> but in that famous song by Elvis Presley, he talks about it being a blue Christmas without you. And that's the essence. It can be people who are feeling blue because someone has died this year and this is the first Christmas that you have without them. It can be that someone feels blue because a loved one is with the military and is overseas and you're separated. It can also be because there's trouble in a family and people are separated and they're not seeing each other this year and there's grief in the family. Sometimes it's a blue Christmas because people have gone through a financial hardship and this Christmas they can't do the kind of celebration that they want to be able to do. They can't buy the gifts that they wanted to. They just can't afford it this year and it makes them feel down. There's a sense of loss. Some have lost a job. And so Christmas feels different. There's other people who have had health challenges. And uh, last Christmas, they may have been more nimble than they are this year. And there's a sense of loss. But to talk about a blue Christmas is to acknowledge loss in the midst of hope. Tyler just finished singing the song, Mary, Did You Know? So imagine that we have all the joy of Christmas, and yet Christmas is very much connected to Easter. It's connected to Good Friday, but it's also connected to resurrection. So the truth is that when we are blue, there is still a promise that we will live again. There is that promise that we will have hope again, even when we're feeling hopeless, when we're feeling alone, that there will be healing doesn't mean we ever forget the one that we've lost. But there's a healing. And our life continues. And God brings us that hope and love and energy. Over Advent, we've had different symbols that we've been having here at uh, prayer time. We have this water. We talked about the water of creation and God uh, separating the waters from the land. And we've talked about the waters of baptism and waters of remembrance and God breathing on the waters, just even a slight movement that sends a ripple effect. Sometimes when we're feeling so blue, it's hard to move, and yet doing one small little action can have a ripple effect of lifting our spirit. One little thing. So we've placed some stones here for prayers over the last few weeks. We have a candle that's burning, reminding us of the light of the world. And we learned in that lesson that it's not only Jesus who's the light of the world, but we are the light of the world, that the light has been put within us. And we're not to put our light under a bushel and hide it, but to let our light shine. So even in loss, all the different kinds of loss, we are not to extinguish the light of love and the light of hope, but to let it shine for ourselves and for others. Today, we have the element of the earth. We have a little scoop here so you don't have to get dirty. <laughs> and if we're talking about the loss of a loved one, in services we often say, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Even on an Ash Wednesday service we say, from the ground we have come and to the ground we have returned. We acknowledge that we are made from the soil, that God fashioned us from the very substance of earth. And one day, all of us shall return there. As a ritual act of remembrance this year, I ask you to take some dirt and just drop it into this water. Whether it's for the loss of a loved one or the remembrance of a loved one, not maybe who died this year, but who you remember every year at Christmas. Your family has just been missing them. It may be for many years. I'm going to put the dirt in here, and if it's another kind of loss, you know what it is. We're not going to ask you to share what kind of loss it is. Whatever the loss is, to take a handful of dirt or this little scoop of dirt and place it into the bowl. And it's going to make the waters kind of muddy. That's what happens when loss comes in our lives, right? 
it stirs stuff up and it looks really messy. But what will happen after some time? The dirt will settle. That's promise, that's hope. The dirt will settle. What happens at the bottom of the ocean? There's dirt, there's this water. Does anything grow at the bottom of the ocean? Oh yeah, sometimes we can think not, but there's all kinds of new life that happens even at the bottom of the ocean. So let this water be water of your baptism, the water of your tears, the water of life, the light of life and love and hope. And let this be remembrance of that which is lost, that which is not here right now but also know that there will be hope. We'll see clearly again. Something new will be given birth. I'm gonna invite Pastor Stephen to come and say a prayer with us. Then we're gonna sing O Little Town of Bethlehem and invite you whenever you're ready to come and take some of the dirt and place it into the water here. So let us pray. God, we come to you as Christmas dawns with the pain growing inside of us. As the nights have been growing longer, so has the darkness wrapped itself itself around our hearts. In this season of our longest night, we offer to you the pain in our hearts, the trauma that some of us cannot put into words. Compassionate God, there are those among us who are grieving over what might have been a death or a loss has changed our experience of Christmas. Once it was a special day for us too, but someone has died or moved away, or we have lost a job or a dream, a goal, a cause. We find ourselves adrift, alone, lost. The Christmas season reminds us of all that used to be and cannot be anymore. The memories of what was or the fears of what may be stifle us. All around us we hear the sounds of celebration, but all we experience is a sense of feeling blue. Please be near us today and in the coming days and nights. Loving God, hear our prayers and in your love answer. When you are ready with whatever understanding of loss you have, come, place some of the dirt into the water.
and we remember the names and faces, people we love, pets we love and lost, situations that have changed. We remember, and the waters now are cloudy. But as I said before, the promise is that that will settle. The dirt is now over those stones of prayers we had before. Just think of them as seeds that have been planted and will grow. Hope will come. We acknowledge the loss. In acknowledging it, we are able to remember and share the love. And we are able to let hope begin to breathe again in us. It doesn't serve us to shove it down and act like it didn't happen. Amen? Amen. But to acknowledge the loss is a part of our healing journey. Sometimes that's stirring the waters, but it will settle. And hope will return. Thank you, loving and life-giving God, that you give power to the faint and strength to the powerless. Thank you that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles and shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you for promising to be with us and to be born in us again and again. Amen. Amen. Thank you.